Welcome to Lagging Politics on YouTube. This little video is going to go through the legislative process in the Northern Ireland Assembly. And we're going to just have a look at uh, the sort of the major steps in passing legislation and on where legislation comes from as well too. So um to start off with them, um, we will uh, just investigate this very important word first. So a proposed law, any proposed law is always called a bill. So whenever you see the word bill, it's a law that hasn't been passed yet. And they're usually formed from the policies of the uh, the executive in Northern Ireland. This would be the Northern Ireland executive, um, but it may come from three three other sources too. Um, policies are just the name, the main sort of the main ideas that the executive may have, or any political party or MLA may have as well too. And policy is just a, a an idea, a political idea. And these are ideas they want to implement, want to turn into laws. So uh, a policy here might have been, for example, uh, a bill here might have been uh, all sixth year students should be provided access to their own common rooms. So a bill would have to go the whole way through uh, the legislative process and at the end of it it becomes an act. So uh, an act is simply a law. So whenever it passes through all the legislative stages it becomes an act. Here we go. Highly technical and it gets passed. Okay, um, But it has to go through an awful lot of stages before it actually gets to that point. So, these are where the sources of a bill may originate. The first one up at the top left hand corner is a manifesto, very important word. A manifesto is simply a set of ideas, a set of policies uh, that every political party will have. So they'll have policies for example on defence, on environment, on healthcare, and they have all these in a, a, a manifesto, a policy document that is usually uh, made available to people um, on websites or you, you might see them to be honest mostly uh, at election time so a lot of uh, MLAs, a lot of like parties will try to put their policies into effect um, in law. The second one is the most common form of sources of a bill it's the executive ministers themselves, the executive ministers themselves can suggest legislation that they may deem necessary for their department uh, much of the legislation actually comes from the programme for government, this is the um, set of proposals, set of policies that are collectively agreed by the executive uh, following a, an election um, or at other stages as well too. So um, you'll know you'll know a couple of these um, uh, program for government uh, policy proposals. We'll look at those a bit later on. Though. Thirdly, uh, the European Union hasn't happened yet. Uh, might not happen. You never know. It uh, just depends. But the these rules coming down, these laws coming down from Europe have to be passed in the assembly as well too. Um, and they have to be followed. Four is something called parity. Parity is accepted legislation from Westminster. So accepted legislation is whenever uh, it's the um, parts of the um, parts of laws that uh, uh, are responsibilities that the Northern Ireland Assembly does not have responsibility for. One of these here at the minute would be uh, welfare reform. Okay, so um, it has to be passed down, has to be agreed at um, at local level at at the assembly. Um, fifth then is committees. So committees in Northern Ireland have very exclusive power to initiate legislation as well. They can make their own legislation, which is a very uh, big power that uh, Westminster committees do not have. Um, they've only used it, however, once really. That's in the recent public ombudsman bill, um, which was pushed through by the, uh, I suppose now the executive uh, committee. Um, back then it was the uh, office of first and deputy first minister. And then finally, you've got the opportunity for a private members bill. Any MLA can introduce their own bill. Um, it does need the cross community support to get the push through, and there's quite a lot of obstacles to um, to get through before this actually becomes law. Okay, so that's the sources for bill. These next stages then are the important stages of the legislative process. First of all is introduction. Okay, they're, they're very simple names, but introductions first. Basically, um, a minister usually will come out and they will read out the title of the bill um, to the um, to the assembly. This allows MLAs a chance to go and find out the basics of the bill, to go back to see their constituents, to see what effect they might have and to build up their own research to make them more informed about the potential implications of this bill and any amendments they want to add. So quite an important stage. They're given a, a period of time before this then comes to the assembly itself. But the next stage then is the debate. So debate is a general debate. It's just in the broad principles of the bill, not in the degree at this stage. 
uh, not the detail, um, it's just in the broad principles, but allows MLAs the opportunity to vote on the key aspects, including point out, pointing out any gaps within that bill. There's no time limit to debate, and the bill is then voted on, and uh, if successful, it's actually allocated to the committee. It can be, however, uh, killed at this stage as well too, so the, the bill may be completely rejected, at which point uh, that's the end of its life in the, in the Assembly. Okay, so uh, debate's very important, allows uh, you know, different points of view to be put into the process and allows potential amendments to be suggested. Okay. However, the amendments are really made in committee stage. So it's perhaps the most important part of the whole process. I call this nitty gritty committee because uh, the committees really deal with the nitty gritty, the, the actual um, fine details of any uh, legislative, uh, any legislation going through. So, uh, so the committees themselves, as you know, are very specialist, and MLAs have been uh, designated uh, for a certain amount of time to spend on these committees. Um, to actually look into the bill on a line by line or clause by clause basis. So these MLAs usually are in the job for uh, the lifetime of the assembly uh, or, or, or perhaps uh, even longer and so they've built up an awful lot of knowledge that can be put into good use. They have the power to call for persons and papers at this stage too. This is basically evidence gathering and if you think about it this is really important for any, uh, any bill going through because they need to get views of people that are going to be affected. Uh, examples of this if you look at your taxi bill, you're able to see that uh, they went and uh, you know, interviewed taxi drivers. They had evidence sessions for uh, the consumer council, you know, about uh, the taxi fares. And an important one there would be disability action. Their views were taken on board whenever um, coming up with like uh, how taxis could be best made available for um, for people with um, uh, disabilities. Uh, they can also very importantly suggest these amendments. Amendments are simply changes to the bill. Um, and this is what the committee is all about. Um, the reservoir bill is your top one at the moment for the number of amendments. Uh, it's hard to know how many amendments could be suggested for reservoirs, but there were 200 suggested for this reservoir bill, um, uh, which is the, the record at the moment. Um, I think it was 72, 73 amendments for the, um, for the taxi bill, um, which were all accepted. The committee, the committee then, then actually produces a report on suggested amendments that they have uh, come up with, um, and they're going to present this then to the assembly itself. The MLAs will be then given a few weeks to study this report, and th this process usually takes it's set down as thirty days, but it can take up to nine weeks depending on the significance of the bill. Uh, so, highly important stage. Then it goes to consideration. Consideration, whether it's um, sent then back to the uh, plenary session in the assembly. And MLAs have the chance to vote now on the details of the bill for the first time. So the committee chairperson usually comes in, they outline the details of the bill firstly, and then they uh, will include the proposed amendments uh, to the bill suggested by the committee. Each amendment is then debated and voted on, and either passed or rejected by the assembly. A final amended bill is then drafted and printed out, and then it's passed through to the next stage. Okay, and the next stage is called final consideration. So, this is the final opportunity to amend uh, the bill. Uh, if there are no amendments, then there is no debate. So it's quite a, it can be quite a um, quick stage, um, but it's the final chance to actually add any amendments if they want. Then I'll go through to the conveniently named final stage. There is no amendments allowed at this point, and it's simply uh, an assembly debate on whether to accept or reject this amended bill. Uh, there are also then legislative checks um, by the Attorney General to make sure that the bill is competent. And the last stage then it goes through to Royal Assent. Uh, Royal Assent is whenever the uh, Secretary of State will pass it on to the Buckingham Palace and the Queen will officially have to sign it and uh, uh, produce the great seal on it for it to become an act uh, and uh, essentially a law. So that there produces actually the law that, uh, that they need. Okay, where do bills come from then? Just a couple of wee things here. So, the Assembly passes both primary and secondary legislation on transferred matters. These are matters that are transferred down to the Northern End Assembly from Westminster. Primary legislation uh, contains the main objectives of a new law, for example, to increase a fine for pollution. Secondary legislation fills in the details, so the amount that that fine is going to be. 
Uh, there are four types of bills within the assembly. We have executive bills, the most common type of bill by far. Um, they make up about 80% of bills in the assembly. Many come from the agreed program for government, agreed by the executive departments. You then have committee bills. Uh, these are bills which the committee have the part to initiate. Again, only two have been passed and both of these have to do with the public ombudsman, uh, which has been set up in 2016. Um, and that's been designed by the uh, the previous office of De First and Deputy First Minister. Then you have private members bills. Uh, these are becoming a lot more influential. For example, John McAllister was the uh, private members bill for the opposition to be introduced into, into um, the Northern Ireland Assembly. You also have the human trafficking bill as well by Lord Morrow from the DUP. Um, and finally, you've got something called private bills. These are bills for individual companies. That one will be ha have as, a, as a, a quick example is Northern Ireland Water, but it's uh, very rare. Okay, so executive bills themselves. The executive usually produces its programme for government. That's a list of proposed laws and policies. After consultation of all executive parties, you can see a, another video in this. Uh, just to give, make you aware of the current programme for government, or the, the, the last one, I should say, uh, the, that there had um, these details here. So free, uh, free nursery places for all three-year-olds, uh, to make Northern Ireland a premier golfing destination with a golfing tournament um, to be decided for Northern Ireland, um, and to replace all housing executive windows with double glazing, and had the, sort of the promise to try to create 20,000 new jobs. Executive bills are simply bills which originate from ministers or their departments. They're the most common type of bill by far in Northern Ireland. Um, between 2011 and 2015, 67 laws were passed. 60 of these were executive bills, so a huge proportion are from the executive. And these are some examples. You've got the taxi bill. It's basically regulation of taxis. You'll all see this on Friday nights, Saturday nights, where you um, see the taxis are all regulated. They've all got registration, they're MOT tested. The person driving has had to have a, a special test. The uh, fares are set in stone, um, and it, you know they have to follow a, a whole group of legislation, legislative um, loopholes, the legislative proposals as well to um, to go on the road. Then you have the Road Traffic Amendment Act. Uh, this affects you all as like students. Um, so it's new rules for learners, new drivers. Food hygiene bill. Those uh, stars are called the scores in the doors it's called so that is now made uh, let's um, it's now a law so they have to actually display these here in a prominent position the shared education bill it requires the government to encourage facilitate and promote shared education um, you've got the special educational needs and disability bill uh, that allows all young people who need extra support at school they're identified early they're assessed quickly and given appropriate support so they can achieve their full potential and then up at, um, in Derry, Lund Derry you had this um, this introduced for from that area I suppose so it's a sunbeds bill and that is uh, to regulate the use of sunbeds to reduce skin cancer rates which at that stage um, were actually increasing astronomically up in Derry um, so that puts age limits on sunbeds has time restrictions and they have to include warnings as well too um, so quite um, quite innovative legislation in some ways okay here's a set of questions for you then so what is proposed legislation called? Proposed legislation. So that's called a bill. Where do most bills come from? Uh, most bills come from the executive. Over 80% come from the executive. Um, what are the main ideas of a party called? BNFP. Those ideas are called policies. What is legislation that goes into a law called? Um, that's called an act. Uh, why is the introduction of a bill important to MLAs? It allows MLAs a chance to research the bill, uh, to consult the constituents, to try to find out the implications of a bill. Uh, what is the second stage called? So the second stage is called debate. Why is the committee stage so important? Well, this is your nitty gritty committee. So it looks as the um, it looks at all the uh, the details of the uh, of the bill. What do the committees produce? So they produce a report, a report that produces all the amendments and the conclusions of the committee. What are past the consideration stage? 
Well, all the amendments from the committee are actually passed at the consideration stage, uh, or rejected, we should say as well too. Uh, what must happen to a bill for it to become law? If it become law, the bill must be passed by the Secretary of State to the Queen, and the Queen must sign it for it to become a, an act. Um, what's the difference between primary and secondary legislation? So primary legislation is just the, the broad outline of a bill, while secondary legislation is the, the key details of the bill. Um, what's a private member's bill? So a private member's bill is um, any legislation introduced from an MLA um, on, the f on the floor of the House privately. Uh, two examples of this, well, you could have the Human Trafficking Act or you could have the Opposition Bill. Okay, that uh, that's the, the sort of the legislative process in a nutshell. I hope it's useful to you. Uh, some parts of this will be uh, very useful for our essays and for uh, smaller questions as well. Um, but I hope it's useful. You can find out more on lagandpolitics.com. Thank you.